Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Put Hill Paint Fabrication. Well, we're back on the Malibu today, the 1965 SS, and today's project will be getting the radiator in and the cooling fans, shroud, and getting it all wired up. So let's jump in close, take a look at this radiator, and we'll talk about what came with it and how much it cost. Okay, this is what we ordered and what we're going to be installing today. This is a Champion aluminum four-row radiator. It's supposed to cool up to a 700 horsepower engine. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice radiator. I think it's made uh, offshore overseas. Uh, I do know they have an uh, all-American made model you can order from them. Uh, it's more expensive, obviously. The polish on it is pretty good, not fantastic. But it's, uh, it's pretty nice. We'll take a closer look at it once we get in. But uh, all in all, uh, the fitment looks pretty good. I had to elongate some holes just a little bit to get them to fit the car, but that could be the car, not the, uh, not the radiator. Um, also ordered as an add-on the uh, stainless overflow. Comes with a bracket kit. And as part of the um, radiator fan combo, it came with the shroud and two spall fans so uh, I forget what the uh, CFM on these are but it's pretty high we knew we were putting air conditioning on this car so I wanted to make sure we had way more cooling than we needed so uh, this is a pretty nice unit it's not polished you can order both of these in uh, fully polished and uh, obviously it's going to cost more and take longer uh, the, I think it looks great the way it is so uh, we got the fans the shroud the uh, overflow tank, the stainless overflow tank, the radiator, and the relay kit for $685, not including tax and shipping. So, and that's right from uh, Champion Radiator. So uh, I think it's a pretty good deal. I've read some reviews on these things. Uh, most of them were positive. So uh, we're gonna give it a shot. Let's get this thing installed. Okay, before we get started, let's do a quick update. I've got uh, probably 90, 95% of the wiring done. So all the senders for the Dakota digital gauges are all hooked up and that's all wired into the loom. I've got, uh, you know, for the, for the distributor, I've got all the other stuff done. Uh, I even, even have the relay in and the circuit breakers for the uh, cooling fans for the radiator. There's the relay right there. There's the circuit breaker. That'd be a 40 amp. Uh, these fans draw quite a bit of amperage. So you're going to need a 40 amp service if you're running dual fans. Uh, that wire coiled up there is actually to feed the fan, so uh, we're going to get into that in a little bit. So, and of course, got the serpentine belt system on before we drop the engine in, uh, but we did not plumb the power steering yet. So, it takes a, re a remote reservoir, which I went ahead and got that plumbed in. So, here it is right here, and this is part of the kit from the CVF uh, Racing. So, they supply all stainless braided lines and fittings. So this line right here coming off the top, now that's a braided uh, PTFE line, so you can make that up yourself. It goes into the high pressure port, and this is the low pressure port right here that goes over to the reservoir right here. And then the big fat one right there is the suction to go back to the pump. So uh, this remote reservoir, you can mount it you know, wherever you want as long as it's straight up and down. I think the instruction said it could be at up to a 30 degree angle. Uh, which I did not want to do and to the really only two places to install it I could find was on the radiator support or on the inner fender well right here. Now I could have uh, you know made a bracket and installed it right here where I've relocated the washer fluid tank. The washer fluid tank installs right here normally on uh, 65 but I wanted to install the overflow uh, for the tank, uh, for the radiator, excuse me, right here, and that would have blocked it. So since I had to relocate this anyways, I thought, well, I'll relocate this over here, which I did. I think it looks great right there, and then I mounted the uh, reservoir for the power steering pump right there. So both of them will sit side by side. I've already kind of mocked it up. I'm pretty sure I've got enough room. A little tight right there with the horn relay, but all the wires clear and everything, so that all looks good. So uh, all in all. We've got the relay already wired in pretty much. We just have to finish that off, but uh, let's go ahead and get the radiator dropped in and we'll take a look at what I have to do to get it to fit perfectly. Okay, before we can get the radiator installed, I've kind of already mocked it up and you can see my Sharpie lines right here. Uh, so when I was trying to mock it up, 
these little ears right here were actually hitting on this spot right here. They were hitting right down here, right where this flares out a little bit. So, uh, and I, I think I've, I'm putting the radiator at its lowest possible position. I'm using the upper holes on the radiator support over here. So uh, it's, it's sitting very low in the car, which is what I want. So I'll be using this, these holes up here, this hole and that hole. And, uh, and so the radiator sitting nice and low. And so what that did was it pushed it down till these actually started interfering. So I don't have this side marked. I'm gonna get that side cut and then I'm gonna check this side and see how it fits. So uh, we just wanna make sure that we're not forcing anything and causing stuff to bend. We want it to sit nice and flat against the radiator support before we bolt it up. Okay, let's go ahead and get this installed. Gonna set it in here so if we can get a bolt started. Using the, reusing the bolts that held the uh, original uh, shroud on and radiator. So they match up here pretty nicely. Like I said, I had to elongate a uh, couple of holes just a little bit. But all in all, uh, it looks like it fits in here pretty nicely. Okay, we got those in loose. Get the bottom ones in and then we'll check for uh, any clearance issues. I do know it gets a little close to the uh, uh, lines for the air conditioning on the vintage air. So we're going to double check to make sure nothing's going to rub and cause a leak. So uh, on the air conditioning or on the radiator. Okay, uh, we got this side snugged up pretty good. This side I haven't tightened up all the way because I'll be using uh, the two mounting bolts for the brackets for the overflow uh, tank. So let me bring you in close. I'll show you a little bit of what I did to uh, use the same two mounts for the tank so you don't have to drill more holes or mount it you know, somewhere you don't want to. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, swing the camera around and we'll pull in close right here. Okay, I wanted to try to keep the tanks right next to each other like we talked about earlier. So uh, they're gonna, it's going to sit just about like this right here. Uh, so to do that, these uh, two ears that they've mounted on here for you, uh, they're not spaced perfectly to match the bolts on the, um, on the radiator support. So they give you these two little brackets. Let's see if we can get it to focus here. And what I did was I drilled, this is the original hole, the slot, and I drilled the 5 16 hole right there. And I did that to both of them. And then I went ahead and elongated one of the slots on the other side so that this will sit just right. Uh, so the spacing, obviously I don't want to mess with the spacing on here. So it's a lot easier to modify the brackets to work. So uh, what we need to do is basically just bolt these brackets. Now these were 90s. Uh, so what I did was I bent them slightly so we had a little bit of a flare there, so they come out at an angle, and then that uh, bracket comes in. Otherwise, the tube hits right up against right here where the uh, fan shroud bolts up. So um, the 90 would have swung it in too tight. So I just kind of bent them till it swung it away, and it fits perfect right in here, right next to the other reservoir. So let's get these bolted on, and then, uh, then we can uh, get this all tightened up and move on to the fan shrouds. Okay, I've got the brackets mounted to the overflow tube and they're spaced out so the holes should line up on the radiator uh, support right here. The hardest part will be getting the lower bolt in because it's kind of back inside, down inside here, but I'm pretty sure I can get it done. So I'm going to pull the top bolt out. We'll go ahead and get this started so it's hanging in there. And then uh, I'm not going to bore you with me fiddling with the one down below, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get that one in as well. We'll get this all tightened up. And then we'll and get this one going. And then we'll get those uh, shrouds on. OK, I got the bottom one in. Wasn't too bad. I switched from a regular bolt to a Allen head cap uh, screw or cap bolt. Uh, and I, what I did was I got, once I kind of took a magnet, got the bolt in back in here, then I just used one of these holes right here 
and put the Allen wrench through there and it was able to tighten it up. It, it started no problem. So now that's installed. So we have the uh, reservoir for the power steering and we've got the overflow tank. They're a little close together, but you can get your hands on here and it's not like you open them that much. And I think it's gonna look really nice right here uh, having these both right like that. So uh, got the radiator tightened real uh, nice. So now we can move back over to the bench and get the fans mounted to the shroud. Okay, I've got the shroud up here on the bench. So uh, there's no top or bottom of this shroud, as far as I can tell. So the mounting bolts uh, holes right here, the two smaller ones, they mount right to the radiator uh, flange. So that's pretty easy. Uh, these fans, they cut the holes out for them, but they do not drill the mounting holes. So you're gonna have to do that. And the, the fan is a little bit larger than the opening they cut. So it's just, I mean, maybe, I don't know, a quarter inch. Uh, this hole's quarter inch smaller, but obviously they didn't want to cut it too small to weaken it right here. So uh, you just got to center it up the best you can. And on these fans, there's flats on here. So, and these fans are uh, pull. So uh, when you're mounted on this side, it pulls the air across. Uh, some fans are, uh, you know, set up for pushers to be on the other side of the radiator, but these are designed to pull the air through. So I'm just going to line these up uh, real carefully. I'll get them both up here. We're gonna have the, the wires going out the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, you know, take a few minutes to center these up and make it all look uh, nice and even and make sure that the fans are centered over the hole so we get the maximum amount of airflow. Then I'm just gonna take a pencil. We'll mark the hole, drill all the holes with the uh, 316 bit. And uh, I've got a bunch of, uh, I think these are 1032 screws here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount them from the underside. You don't want uh, the, the unused part, portion of the bolt sticking through towards the uh, radiator because this thing is only maybe you know a half inch tall. So if this thing was to vibrate and these screws were sticking out far enough, they could you know, bounce into one of the cores and uh, poke a hole. So I'm gonna mount them with the, uh, out with the nuts on this side. And uh, that way we don't have to worry about it. It'd be nice and smooth and flush on the other side. Okay, got the holes drilled. I got uh, the screws poked up through there. I just got some blocks of wood underneath so they don't fall through and irritate me while I'm trying to set these down. So we're just gonna go ahead and get these lined up, get the washers and lock washers and everything on it. Get it tightened up real nice. And then we can go ahead and get it mounted to the uh, radiator. Now, like I said, this, this shroud fits the radiator just fine. It's, there's no problem there. I already checked uh, the two small mounting holes. Um, I don't think they supplied hardware for that. So I'm going to have to uh, dig around in my stuff, see what I can find. But let me get all these on here. And then we'll be moving over to the radiator to get this installed. OK, we're about ready to drop the uh, shroud on with the fans already mounted. Uh, now, since we already have the overflow tank right here, can't get in right here, and there's no other way to like install this later so we can get to all these bolts. So all I did was uh, use the old uh, masking tape trick here. So I've got a washer and the nut down inside there, and I just wrapped the masking tape around it uh, and just left the hole open. So I can kind of just fish that down in there and put the bolt in, get it started. Then I can just pull up on the wrench and the tape should come with the wrench. So. Uh, let me grab the shroud and then get this thing on here. Just gonna kind of set it down like that. Grab a bolt here. And it goes right there. And since I can reach the other side easily, I'm gonna go ahead and get this one on so it's in position, then we can get the wrench down inside there and get that thing started. Okay, let's see if my wrench trick will work here. I'm gonna drop this down in here. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use my little impact to spin it. Maybe not. catch. There we go. All right. It's tight. Double check that before I pull that wrench away. 
nice and tight. All right, we just got to get the wrench out. Easier said than done, huh? Got it. If it ain't going, force it, right? There we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the other bolts in, and then uh, we're going to get this thing wired up. Okay, I got the uh, fan shroud bolted on and everything, and if I was smarter, I would have uh, put the fans on the shroud and mounted the shroud right to the radiator on the bench and then mounted the whole unit to the, the radiator support. But uh, live and learn, right? So it was a little hard to get my fingers down in there, but I got all the bolts tightened up. So there's pigtails underneath here uh, of the fan for the fans. So what I'm going to do is I've got these little uh, vinyl coated clamps and uh, basically uh, underside there, I'm just going to take those and I'm going to slip them over the bolts that are holding the fans on and just put an extra washer and a nut and just kind of clamp those so they're nice and neat and go across the bottom. And then we have to route these pigtails connected to them over to uh, closer to where the relay is. Now I've got plenty of wire here to connect to these so you just have the hot wire and then you've got a ground. So I'll put these together and run them over to a good ground and then I'll connect the, all the reds together up underneath real quick and we will be just about done. Okay, let's get these wires on here. All plugged together. If you wanted to hard wire it, I guess you could just go ahead and cut the plugs off and wire it together. So plan is just run these together, put a little clamp right here and then uh, a clamp right here. Kind of hold these together uh, so it's nice and neat. And then another one over here so it's tucked up under there nice and clean, doesn't get uh, near the fan or any other problems. Okay, that's buttoned up in there really nice, super clean. Now you could have used uh, zip ties around the, the fins right here. Um, zip ties are great, but uh, I think this is a much better installation. So all we have to do is uh, get the wires up top here and splice them together and hook them onto the main lead. And uh, this thing's about done. Okay, I got the wires run up here after we got them all uh, nice and neat down, down low there. Uh, what I did was I connected the two grounds together and I'm going to run those over and connect them right here to a nice chassis ground. So that'll work out really nice. And then the other wire is right here and we're just going to connect that. Um, I put the two leads from the fans together in a butt connector here. These are really nice waterproof butt connectors that uh, I picked up off on Amazon. It's a really nice sets. A couple of them, they weren't very expensive. And it saves me trips to uh, the store all the time where I live. It's a little bit of a drive to get to uh, get anywhere to get supplies. So it's nice to have everything and all the drawers, you know, ready to go. So I'm going to get the uh, heat gun out. We're going to heat shrink these real quick. And then uh, I'm going to tuck the red one up underneath the battery box. The relay's right here. So it's going to be right there with it. And then we'll get this bolt out and get that area clean and make sure we get a good ground for that. We will be just about done. Let me get these heat shrinked on there. Okay, get this thing bolted up over here and we will be just about done. Okay, I got uh, all the paint around the hole cleaned off, got the bolt cleaned off. Make sure we get a nice ground right here. We'll get this bolt back in and then we'll see if we can figure out a way to test this.
All right, let's see if they work. Oh yeah. Woo. It's moved quite a bit of air. There's no way this thing's gonna be overheating, that's for sure. All right. All right, that's about it. Let me uh, button all this up and we'll take a quick tour of what we got accomplished. And uh, that's one more step closer to getting this engine running. Okay, the preset uh, thermoset switch is right here. It's set at 185 degrees. I've got the wire run around. Comes along the valve cover here. It's in the same loom with the uh, choke uh, heater. And then it comes down and comes over to the relay. Uh, the switch systems also worked uh, wired in with a trinary switch. So if the engine gets to 185 degrees, the fans come on. If the pressure in the AC system, I think if it gets to 245 PSI, it'll also turn the fans on. And what, that's what you want when you got electric fans, but you have to have both because let's say you start up the car and you turn the AC on full blast and the engine hasn't come up to temperature yet to start the fans, uh, the, the AC could actually go over pressure, which is not good for the system. So. This kicks it on when the pressure gets too high in the AC system or the engine gets to 185 degrees. So, and then we got the overflow on, we got the fans on, the wires are all nice and neat up underneath. The, really the only thing left to do here is get a overflow tube hose run and then connect over to the over to overflow reservoir. It connects at the bottom. But all in all, it came out really nice. It's just one more piece to the puzzle of getting this engine started up again. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video on getting the Champion radiator, fan shroud, and fan kit and reservoir all installed on the Chevelle. It fit really nicely. I only had to elongate a couple of holes just a little bit, but we got, to, got it wired and got it tested, so it moves a lot of air. Really happy about that. But uh, send me some comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, tell me what radiators you guys are running, which, which ones you like the best. I have my GTO project coming up. And uh, I do need, I, I'm, that GTO engine needs massive amounts of cooling. That thing used to run hot all day on me when I was driving, and that's without air conditioning, and it's gonna get air conditioning for sure. So send me a comment, let me know what you guys think, what's a good system for uh, your cars that you guys tested out. Anyways, that's about it for me. All I gotta do is measure out, we gotta figure out some hoses for this thing, and we'll be that much closer to getting this thing running. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time we release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.